Hello, it's Virginia Lamont Nagley, or my friends call me Ginny from Art Yourself Studio. And I'm going to do an, a painting demonstration of a gnome. It's the second gnome. My friends and I uh, challenged each other to do five videos this week. So I'm doing the videos and I'm sharing with you. And I certainly hope you will be able to join me in painting this gnome. I think it'd be a perfect Valentine card. Um, or just a nice card to send somebody a nice positive note in these times, whatever, whatever you can use it, however you would like to use it. I'm going to show you first how we're going to mix. I'm taking a yellow ochre and adding just a little tip of red that I had on my palette here. I'm using a, a number eight brush and I'm going to dip in the nose right away just to place her nose and put her placement you can tell I'm going to make a she. Last time I made a he uh, because I want to put some braids on. I thought braids would be kind of fun. If you want to lighten up part of that nose, you can just swipe out a little bit with your uh, wet brush, um, but just kind of take some of the water out and then lift. That's what we call lifting. Uh, the next thing I'll do is put in her um, hair. Uh, let's do some golden because that will kind of place where her the rest of her is her nose and her body her shirt are going to go so really when you're doing the braids you just need to do this just cute little back and forth like a chain just a cute little chain and then you might want to have a, a little bit of hair coming down from each chain and we'll put like Two little bows there or something. Uh, I like the um, tone. The sorry, I'm going to lay down her arms. They're going to come out and have a nice wide sleeve. I'm going to do one on both sides. And this is actually the background color. I'm just going to I'm going to do some design on top of it. But I like that background color. I'm going to give her a little little mitten. And I put a little blob there, that's fine. I can turn it into something or pick it up, either one. The mitten lost its shape because I got carried away with that blob. <laughs> but that happens, don't worry, we're just having fun here. Uh, you're gonna paint a cute little card for somebody. And if you do paint it, I'd love for you to share, uh, show it to me in um, on Facebook or Instagram or tag me, Art Yourself Studio. I'd love to see what you do. Uh, these really can make cute cards. So it's pretty heavy duty down here. So I, I had the hat kind of coming up to here, but because I want it proportioned on my paper, I'm going to bring the hat up higher. And I'm also going to do the hat in that light layer like I did the arms so that I can really see it. There we go. And I'll probably, I have a little teeny line here that kind of marked my place. I will erase that later because my paper is wet right now. So I don't want, I don't want to have a chance of ruining my painting. And I love how their hats just come right over their, their noses. Take your time, have fun with it. Just do a light sketch. This one really, you don't, I don't think you need to sketch it out. This is more for a beginner wanting to learn how to paint watercolor. I just want you to get on and play. Um, I really believe if you learn some of the tricks and, and tools of the trade, you will become a successful watercolorist. You won't have to worry about not being as good as everybody else. You're just doing the best you can, but you'll have the language. I do teach classes and I like to teach the, the language. I break it down so you don't feel lost. Uh, here we go. That little mitten looks funny. <laughs> Let me fix that mitten up. Sometimes it'll happen and you can fix that. That's not a problem. It's just paper and I'm just darking it up a little to make that shape better. And then I'm going to match this side. Darkening it up. Now she's not going to have a beard. So I'm going to have to give her a cute little shirt or a dress or pants uh, I do like the little black shoes, so I'll go ahead and put those in, or you could use a navy blue. I've talked about the black in the past, but uh, we use a mixture, black. I'm going to put her toes inside her hair. She's going to have taller toes. This is so fun. You can decide how you want your little gnome to be. She's going to have teeny little feet or big feet. 
Okay. Um, black, we use um, the red, green, blue, and sepia and mix it together. And then you make a big pot of black. This is Judy Morris mixture. I learned from Mary Showman and I love it. She, she recommends you squeeze the tubes into this jar and then you have a really rich black. If you're using black straight from your watercolor palette, I advise you to just add in some other color, either purple or blue or just another color to give your black a little richness. Sometimes the black straight out of the jar is just too, out of your palette is just too much. Okay, I've, I've kind of stalled enough to let some of this dry. Uh, I'd like to have, let's see something fun. Let's do a little purple, a purple little bonnet or uh, what do you call those with the little balls, the little. And maybe I can give her some, a little dress, a purple dress that comes out here and it comes out here and it grows across and maybe I'll have some stripes in it. Could have probably done that first and then done the uh, headband, the, the um, braids, but I don't mind it. I think it's kind of cute. And I really was excited about painting the braids. Sometimes I'll just paint my favorite part. And <laughs> I'll paint my favorite part first. I love her little nose. She does need a little bit of a shadow under the hat. And I wanted a little bit of, uh, to make that round sphere. So I'm just putting a little bit out here and a little bit over the top. So we're gonna scoop it around a little, maybe pick up some, yeah. And then I'm gonna take that same color, uh, this gold and really outline these braids, give them a real definite, Now I'm still with that eight brush. If you really want to go fine tune, more fine tune, just go down a brush. Let's do that. Let's just go down a brush. And this one is a zero. I very rarely use a zero, but for this purpose, let's just use the zero. And since we've got a purple thing going, I'm going to go ahead and use purple. I'm going to do a purple, is this dry? This is on a block, a watercolor block, so the paper's block, so I can't really tell if it's dry. Uh, one way you can tell if it's dry is if you feel underneath and it feels cold, then you know it's dry. But uh, the heart, for, for the heart, this is a really pointy brush. You do one circle on this side, a circle on this side, and then a circle down here, and then just connect them. Maybe you could do this with your kids and they could make some Valentine cards this year for their teachers or the principal or superintendent. I have a friend who's a superintendent of a school system and she, I know how hard she works. Maybe she could use a little card like this. Okay, a little or heart, just one a little smaller. And the way you can get some inspiration for these, you can make them up as you go, or you can look online and just look up gnomes if you're using someone else's artwork, you might want to give them credit for it. But if you're making it up yourself, that's fine. That's no problem. Uh, we, we don't want to be known for using other people's artworks. But I get my inspiration from, from um, the internet. I'll type in a topic and then, and then I'll save that the topic under topics on my computer. And then when I'm ready to teach a topic, I have all these pictures that'll support what I'm teaching. Uh, I love to teach birds, animals. I love to teach beginners. So if you are a beginner, please contact me. I will help you step-by-step step to learn how to make your watercolors beautiful and for you to have success. All right, look what I'm doing here. Now I notice, uh, remember when I put in the hair ties, I said, we'll do something. I think because I have purple as the complementary color, I'm going to just put some purple little like indicate a purple bow. Like she just has a purple bow on her. Yep, there you go. There we go. I might outline this mitten. Sometimes if you're not happy with the way it looks and you wanna emphasize the shape, you can outline it. 
Um, it's a little bit of an illustration type. But again, I like how it outlines and I did not outline it in black, although there's no reason why you can't. On illustration, you can outline in black, but I feel like with watercolor, we have so many other colors and so many beautiful colors we can use. I would, I would try to stay away from the black. I just liked it on the shoes. There we go. Let's outline the nose too. Let's see if we like that. Sometimes outlining just makes something stand out a little bit more. Again, I'm looking at the picture of it and I'm thinking, okay, let's add a little bit to the dress. So this is a nice, quick, easy way to do a quick little Valentine card. These, these um, watercolor paper boards are uh, 140 pound. This is a six by eight and it comes in a block. Uh, there's so many different watercolor papers you can use. Just use what you have, have fun and play. And if you'd like to join me, uh, join me on Facebook. I have a Facebook, I have an inner circle watercolor inner circle group, and I post videos in there. In fact, this, this video will go in there for my, my inner circle people. Um, I have office hours, I have um, classes, anything you might be interested in. I hope you uh, consider joining me. Uh, if you like this video and you want me to do some more, give me a thumbs up or send me a direct message if you'd like to get on my email list and see what kind of trouble I can get into. Okay, thanks for joining me. Have a great, great day.